Everyone would like to get ahead with their riding, right? Welcome to Equestrian Skill Builders. If you'd like to improve your riding and training, win more ribbons at your next horse show, or generally like other horsey related stuff, then you are in the right place because we talk about all those things and bring information from equestrians for equestrians. To start small and build lifelong habits and discipline. And you mentioned that, Patrick, about having your training program. So maybe too much to do a whole month without stirrups, that no stirrup November thing. So try to build a lifelong habit of riding five minutes at the beginning of your ride without stirrups to build on that. So have the discipline to do that for a little while and then build on that. So what is one thing that riders can do, you think, Patrick, to start small and build a lifelong habit of doing i'm saying just instead of doing a whole month of without stirrups do five minutes each ride without stirrups what's something that you could think well i think the first thing in preparation is before you ride or get on is to have a plan you know yep. the plan can't be just to go in the ring and just go in a big old circle i mean there's a zero benefit to doing that it's bored and your horse gets ring sour and you know there's so many things you can do um, in a really good 20 or 25 minute ride, if you have a plan. And it's, and mean, it's not like that. You, there's no access to any information. I mean, you could put that in Google and have a 20 minute ride at your fingertips. Well, it's, I mean, I spent the winter with a plan with my horse and it was basically, I did no jumping. I don't need to, the horse did flat work and I, it shows and has paid off, but I'm not going to go in the ring and just say, you know, wing it and try to, you know, figure out what I'm going to do. There's always things to work on. You're the one that's developing the horse. If you don't have a plan for that horse, then you're never going to get the result and you're not going to have the mindset for it because you haven't had a plan in the beginning. That's the problem. These nowadays, the, nobody has a goal. Nobody writes things down. Nobody has exercises they do. There's so many things you can do with poles. There's so many things you can do with cavalettis. You don't have to jump a three foot fence all the time. There's everything in between those fences that people need to brush up and work on and, and tackle those things. And that's going to give you the mindset to get to that goal at the end of in chapter 10, right? It's exactly right. And, and uh, we have this from Jessica who says growing up in Kentucky, we were taught that every you treat every single horse, like they're running the Derby. It doesn't matter if it's the old nag on the hill, you treat them like gold and you'll get gold. That's excellent. I really like that Jessica because you treat them well and uh, train them well. And I like what you say, Patrick, that uh, there's so much stuff in between the jumps that people have to work on so that they can get to the jumps. It's not just the jumping. It's all the stuff in between so that you can get to the jumps. So, but get, getting back to this success and, and riding discipline, I like where you say have a plan. That's so important about having a plan because success just doesn't come by just wanting it. You have to have a plan. If you know you're, you're here, if you're here and you want to get to this point, you have to know what you need to do in between there to get to that point. So if you're walking, trotting, cantering, and you want to do a two foot nine hunter course is the end point. You have to be able to take that course and break it down into all its component parts and work on all those things so that you can put it together when you get to that horse show. It's not just, doing a course after course, after course, after course, after course. Yeah. And I think the other big thing that people don't take into consideration when putting together a plan, uh, horse and rider, treating them separately is fitness. Um, you can't have a goal and be riding your horse that you don't really have, you know, goals for and expect that it can go and jump that with those courses, but if it's not fit, I mean, the flat work and all that stuff is so important. It's the, you know, jumping those sticks in between is nothing, but I mean, fitness too, fitness for um, a rider and fitness for, we're athletes, right? Our horses are athletes. We have to build the right muscles. If you want your horse to be able to lengthen and shorten, they can't lengthen and shorten if they're not fit. It takes a lot of work. 
the expectations right. I think have to be for fitness too. Yeah. And I think if you're driving in a regular program it, it, throughout the three, four five times a week, then your fitness kind of comes along with that. And there has to be different types of fitness too. Like you say, the lengthening and shortening to develop the longitudinal suppleness, the lateral suppleness and the lateral strengthening and pushing and all those muscles that the horse needs for jumping. But I, I like what you say about uh, getting to the jumps. I mean, if you don't have those simple but important exercises of putting the horse together and lengthening that stride control, then you will not be able to get to the jumps properly. And that's really important. I'd like to also say that this broadcast is sponsored by Equestrian Skill Builders. Become a thinking rider. You'll progress faster, ride effectively, and be extraordinary. Now, you can get my free mini course called Ride in Harmony. You can say goodbye to those bad rides, and being understood by your horse just got easier. I put the link in the comments here. And my final words are you can understand your horse. And now go use this stuff. Go use this stuff. Have some guts. Go use this stuff and go hug your horse. And we'll see you. <laughs> see you next week. Thanks very much. See ya. Bye. Yeah.